Thank you for joining Wars of the Rosies. And this is Amendment from the Encyclopedia of Freemasonry by Albert G. Mackey. Amendment. All amendments to the bylaws of a lodge must be submitted to the Grand or Provincial or District Lodge for its approval. An amendment to a motion pending before a lodge takes precedent of the original motion, and the question must be put upon the amendment first. If the amendment be adopted, then the question will be on the original motion as so amended. And if then this question be lost, the whole motion falls to the ground. The principal parliamentary rules in relation to amendments which are applicable to the business of a Masonic Lodge are the following. 1. An amendment must be made in one of three ways by abiding or inserting certain words, by striking out certain words, or by striking out certain words and inserting others. Two, every amendment is susceptible of an amendment itself, but there can be no amendment of the amendment of an amendment. Such a piling of questions one upon another would tend to embarrass rather than to facilitate business. The object which is proposed to be affected by such a proceeding must be sought by rejecting the amendment to the amendment and then submitting the proposition in the form of an amendment of the first amendment in the form desired. Cushing illustrates this as follows. If the proposition consists of A-B, and it is proposed to amend by inserting CD. It may be moved to amend the amendment by inserting EF, but it cannot be moved to amend this amendment, as, for example, by inserting G. The only mode by which this can be reached is to reject the amendment in the form in which it is presented, namely to insert EF and to move it in the form in which it is desired to be amended, namely to insert EFG. 3. An amendment once rejected cannot be again proposed. 4. An amendment to strike out certain words, having prevailed, a subsequent motion to restore them is out of order. 5. An amendment may be proposed to which will entirely change the character and substance of the original motion. The inconsistency or incompatibility of a proposed amendment with the proposition to be amended through an argument, perhaps, from its rejection by the Lodge is no reason for its suppression by the presiding officer. 6. An amendment before it has been proposed to the body for discussion may be withdrawn by the mover, but after it has been in possession of the Lodge, it can only be withdrawn by leave of the Lodge. In the Congress of the United States, leave must be obtained by unanimous consent, but the usage in Masonic bodies is to require only a majority vote. 7. An amendment having been withdrawn by the mover may be again proposed by another member. 8. Several amendments may be proposed to a motion, or several amendments to an amendment, and a question will be put on them in the order of their presentation. But as an amendment takes precedent of a motion, so an amendment to an amendment takes precedent of the original amendment. 9. An amendment does not require a seconder, although an original motion always does. There are many other rules relative to amendments which prevail in parliamentary bodies, but these appear to be only ones which regulate this subject in Masonic assemblies. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and comment. And if you can, please consider donating to Wars of the Rosies. Links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you so very much.